Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. This is Corey Heights. Some battles. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they got us. If they did, maybe, maybe. So you will get better as a player during that year. So it was kind of exciting. Like, oh, yes, yeah, somebody wants me. Well, you mentioned Duncan Robinson there. Let's get into him a little bit because everyone that reaches out, well, not everyone, but probably half the kids that reach out to me say, hey, Corey, can you help me find a prep school so I can get a D1 scholarship and play in the NBA? So it's everyone's dream out there. And Duncan came in to you as a skinny kid. When he came to you for his post-grad year, was there anything you could have seen in the crystal ball of, of how he conducted himself or how he you know, practiced or put time in the gym that gave you any inclination that he would one day end up in the NBA? Corey, truth be told, if I had that conversation back then, I think he'd have a better chance of getting his MBA than getting in the NBA. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that's not a shot at him because he was a heck of a player even back then. But, you know, to, to think about what he has done is, you know, otherworldly and where he is. But what he did have has always had as a passion to play. Um, and, you know, he says this now, and of course, now, now that he's there, I look back and say, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I can, I can see <laughs> he says this all the time now and, and um, referencing how he's able to get there. He stacks days together. That's his thing, a stack. You know, anyone can have a week, anyone can have a summer, you know, uh, have, have a good month, but it's that consistent mental toughness, that approach that you take is where the improvement comes. And it's, it's, you know, I did this today. What's the next challenge tomorrow? And that was sort of his course he took all along. He invested in himself, um, like a lot of these college level or college bound players are doing. Um, and just sort of, again, did a great job in the moment that he was in. Um, he did, when he came here, he just fully took advantage of where he was in the process at that given time and what was around him. Uh, you know, I, I, all the time I'm hearing people when it was at the end of his senior years, how do we miss on him? And they say, now, so, you know, I don't know that people really missed on him because at that given time, he was not, you know, he was not a big 10 level player. He had a lot of signs of, you know, being a six, what he was six, 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 seven back then. He was fluid and he really, um, again, had that passion and he could shoot it. I really thought I just loved his pace and how his feel for the game I thought was outstanding um, at that age level. But, you know, to, to say that his feet and his physicality were ever getting to the point where he could be a big time player in the NBA. I mean, that was kind of thing for all of us, something that was hard to look, look at, but sort of where he was at that moment and how well he managed his, just his grind to the day without thinking, overthinking things was important. That's why he, he chose the path he did with Williams from the get-go. Um, that was a balanced approach for him again. You know, he, he really wanted that academic piece as well as the basketball. And that was part of sort of, I think the fabric of his, his family's influence clearly as well. Um, and that path that he's had, and I think he'll probably tell you now, if, if, if he didn't take all those steps to where he was, he probably wouldn't be where he is today you know it's not one of those was a regrettable move for him 